Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing an updated what's in my camera bag video. The last time I did one of these was like years and years ago and a lot has changed since then. My style of photography has changed a lot and with that comes a change in my camera and my lenses and the lighting that I bring with me. I have a shoot later with my friend Charlotte. I'm going to be taking some of her headshots. So I have a lot that I'm going to be bringing. Um, but let's start with the bag that I use. I've been using this one for maybe like two years now. This is the Nomadic and Peter McKinnon collaboration. I know that he has like multiple bags out with them now, so I don't know which one this is. They sent this over to me a while back because I sometimes work with his team. And I actually like love this bag. I feel like it's the most heavy duty bag that I've found myself getting the chance to kind of use. And there's so many different compartments. There's like a laptop slot, there's side pockets, there's like a front compartment. There's like so many different things and I use all of it. I love shooting out of my own apartment, but a lot of the time I'm traveling or going to like a studio and I need as much space possible in my camera bag. And this really does the job. All right, getting right into it. This is the camera that I use within all of my shoots. I've been using this honestly ever since it came out. It is the Nikon Z7 II. It has a 45.7 megapixel sensor. It has dual card slots, which is awesome. It has a spot for an XQD card and an SD card. It takes 4K video at 60p. Um, it also has eye detection for both people and animals, which is really cool. I work a lot with an icon, and with that comes a lot of questions around which camera I actually use because I have a lot of cameras. But this one is really my go-to. I also have the Z7 as well, um, just as my kind of backup camera. Um, I've run into situations in the past where I've been on a shoot and my camera just stops working, and so I definitely like to have a backup. I don't know if I already said it, but this is a mirrorless camera and I made this switch from DSLR to mirrorless when the Z6 and Z7 came out. It definitely takes some getting used to, but I honestly feel like it elevates just my whole process and I can't go back now, like I'm just too far into like the mirrorless game. The lens I have on this guy is the 50 millimeter f 1.2. This is a prime lens and the 1.2 aperture makes for really great use in low light situations and perfect for some of the headshots we'll be taking today of Charlotte. The first lens that I ever got other than the kit lens that came with my camera was the 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens. So just this level of millimeter for me is really trustworthy and I love it for all of the photos that I take day to day. Um, up next is my 35 millimeter f 1.4 lens. Um, and you can tell I use this a lot. It's honestly pretty dirty, but Honestly, this one is usually on my camera and it usually is like glued to it for the most part. I love this lens. And more recently, I've been shooting a lot in studios. And so sometimes those are a little bit tighter spaces and it feels really nice to be able to see the whole scene within this 35 millimeter versus the 50 sometimes. But it just depends on where I'm shooting and what kind of look I'm going for. And then this having an aperture of 1.4 makes it really good in low light as well. Although I love this lens, it's not completely compatible with my mirrorless cameras. It was made for DSLRs, so that's why I have this Nikon mount adapter on here. One day soon, I'll invest in the mirrorless 35 millimeter to make it fully compatible with the Z7 II that I use. But for now, it just adds a little bit more bulk to my setup. And with this adapter, it still retains all of the features that I love about this 35 millimeter and any other lenses that I've invested in previously towards my DSLR. I just love the fact that I could still use with my new camera. Another lens that I pack with me um, here is the 20 millimeter F 1.8 lens. It's the widest prime lens I use and it really comes in handy again in those really tight spaces, but also creates this kind of like interesting kind of perspective because of how wide it is. Sometimes I feel like it plays with a little bit of distortion with the photo, which could either be really cool or sometimes I don't necessarily want that. So it just depends on the look I'm going for. I used this a lot when I first got it and I feel like more recently I've been going back to my 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter situation, but this is really great to have for those wider shots. Next up, I wanted to talk about some lens filters that I use on these various lenses I just went over. All of my lens filters are from Prism Lens Effects. I feel like I've tried to experiment with filters in the past, but Prism Lens Effects has some really cool, unique ones that really change up the entirety of your image. I truly cannot stop buying them. It's actually becoming a problem. I have way too many. I just wanna see what they all do, but 
Just to name some, I have a cross screen filter, which creates some really cool kind of stars in your photos whenever you're sharing um, direct light. I just purchased this night FX filter, so it has a sort of like green tint to whatever you're kind of shooting. I have a kaleidoscope filter, I have uh, their radiance filter. Um, I also purchased a ton of different lens adapters because usually when you're buying lens filters You're only buying them for one particular size and that only fits one lens and these are definitely an investment Some of these filters can range from $75 to a few hundred honestly So these kind of adapters really help so you don't have to buy all of these various different sizes but Yeah, they're really a great time and I would recommend just even purchasing one to try it out and seeing if you like it. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about some flashes that I bring with me. Um, it's taken me a while to get on the flash train, but now I'm on it, I'm not leaving. I think for me, it was like I would see these sort of photographers shooting with these giant flashes and it looks really cool, but it was never something that would fit with kind of the things that I shoot. And I think it was all about just finding the sort of lights and flashes that work for my particular style. Um, all of my flashes are from Profoto. Here I have the A2 with me, which I just recently got. Here I have the A1, and then I also have the C1. The A1 is an on-camera flash, but the others I love to throw on a tripod and kind of have it light my model that way. These have a super powerful flash that I can't really get within the continuous lights that I use. One way that I love to kind of spice up my uh, flash photos is applying these different click gels onto my flashes. Profoto has this really cool sort of way of working and all of their stuff is really user friendly and these click gels are magnetic and can easily connect to my lights. So sometimes I'll attach like this kind of yellow or warm orange that I have and create this sort of golden hour look. Or if you want something more like cooler and toned down, I have like a blue or a turquoise I can use. So the turquoise one I was talking about, I just dropped and broke, so RIP. Other than these click gels, I also have different types of kind of light bending tools from Profoto that I use. I have their click softbox, which is just a softbox, but it's magnetic, so it can easily just latch on to all of these flashes that I just mentioned. And then I also have their click barn door. And honestly, for the longest time, I would see these and not really know what exactly their kind of purpose was until I saw some results of people using these. It's just kind of another way to be more in control of the light that you're shooting. You can create a strip of light, you can have it kind of disperse over the entire frame. You can be really in control with these and I mean, it's super cute and tiny and anything that's small enough to be able to just throw in my camera bag is perfect because I'm not always positive that I'm gonna be using all of this stuff Sometimes it's just like a little bit. Another kind of hesitation with me and using flash has been just how to kind of control it and connect it to my camera. So I use Profoto's Connect Pro. It gives you six groups and within those six groups you can have hundreds of different channels. So you can connect a ton of different lights to this guy and also have the ability to use your phone to further control it. Moving on from flash, I still do bring some continuous lights with me. I have a smaller one and then I have these two really big studio lights, one of which I'm shooting with right now. They either can connect to battery or just be plugged in so it's really cool to be able to just move them around if needed what's really cool about these continuous video lights is that they're super adjustable and interchangeable so you can kind of switch out whatever color you want um, another thing that I'll bring with me is some film cameras one in specific is the Nikon EM this is just kind of a beginner interchangeable lens 35 millimeter camera recently I haven't really been shooting as much film I've kind of fell back in love with shooting digital and it kind of always ebbs and flows with my process. I feel like when I kind of encountered film, I was shooting half of my shoots on this Nikon EM or my other Olympus point and shoot. Sometimes I do want to see my shot instantly and that is kind of the drawback of shooting with film. But also something really cool because then you can kind of wait on it and see it later. It's just a whole, they're two totally separate processes. But yeah, recently I haven't really been packing this with me but I thought I'd mention it because sometimes it's a staple. Another thing I'll bring with me is tripods. All of these flashes and continuous lights, they need tripods and light stands. And also, if I don't have someone to help me 
record behind the scenes with me while on my shoots. I like to bring a tripod for my phone to sit on to record anything that's going on so I can use later. A big part of just posting on social media as a photographer has become how you're taking the shot and people just love to see what's going down and how you got to that final photo. And so recording behind the scenes has been crucial and if you don't do it, I would recommend you do it because people love to see it. This list is getting really long, but I'm almost done. Um, I also bring a bunch of batteries with me for my flashes, my cameras. I also will try to bring a charger with me in case, but I'm pretty good at keeping things charged beforehand because I don't want to run into that. It's not like I'm shooting every single day. Sometimes it feels like that, but I do have time the night before or the few hours before to usually charge everything and clear my memory cards. Another thing I'll bring, memory cards. Like I mentioned, I'll bring my phone with me. I'll also bring Sometimes, usually when I'm more so traveling, my laptop, which is a Mac. And then I'll also pack with me a speaker, usually. While in a studio, I love to have music playing, but also sometimes when I'm recording behind the scenes, we can't have that going on because we want to record audio. And for audio, I use these Rode mics. These are their wireless Go mics, and I have a lav attachment that I use to kind of hook it to my collar or like inside my shirt and I'll like tape it here. Another thing that I'll use, which Sounds very basic, but I don't know why I wasn't using it within my photography is a reflector. And if you don't have one, most definitely pick one up because they're not too pricey and they're a great way to kind of bend and direct your light onto whatever subject you're shooting. And usually reflectors will come with different kinds of materials. So they'll usually come with like a white kind of backdrop, a golden one and a silver one. They're really great, especially if you have a lot of backlight coming in. I know recently, again, I've been shooting in a lot of studios and you can't always be in control of the natural light that's coming in. And this just allows you to control it that much better. But um, I think that's it. But it is kind of cool to compare this video to my past what's in my camera bag video and just see how I've grown within my photography and the gear that I use. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Again, links to everything will be down below if you need it. And I'll see you guys soon.